welcome to a new test and teardown video. I'm laughing because <laughs> this thing is so big. I need to hold the camera all the way up to my nose height to get this thing <laughs> in the picture. Oh man, this is wonderful. Look at this counter. So it is, of course, another HP. Yeah, I love HP. And this one is a model 521C electronic counter. Look at this beautiful unit. It is just fantastic. There's something about this. So we got five di digits. You could you could call this digits. Right, and that will be neon bulbs showing the five digits of counting, and some say 44, some say 45 tubes in this one. So, and you can imagine it is from 1960. It is very, very heavy. Nice table top design. There's a big fan in here. Let me see if I can I can show you this. In here, there was a filter. I removed this uh, the filter for cleaning. Look at that. Why is it looking like that? So there are some little springy things where the filter fits so all you have to do is just stick it in here and then just do the so now that is restored perfectly fine so uh, I think we should try and power it up and see if it will blow the fuses so about fuses it's a very good idea to just check the rear is there any indication about if this is for usa voltage or europe voltage no not really and how do you like this fuse modification so somebody blew the fuse and then they just solder a thin wire over the fuse. I don't like this at all. So I think I need to open it and inspect the voltage selection. And of course put in a proper rated fuse. I got no idea what kind of amps this is. Definitely not any uh, approved value. I think it is alive. I put in a one amp fuse and I dialed up the voltage really, really slowly. But it says on the rear panel one amp. Look at that. I am so close to blow the fuse. So is this thing really running at 100% um, specifications to the fuse? Hmm, I don't know. I'm not super happy about that. We got a gate. One second gate. Aha. Uh -huh. Display time. Aye, cool. So we got some stuff. I can do some display time here, right? One second. I mean, we got a lot of light in all the lamps. Let's. Oh, that is going to make a nice picture. I look forward to play with this tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, everything is more or less up and running here. At least all the neon bulbs, they start in zero. That is a good sign. 
there is a reset button here. Let me try and give this thing some input. You got to see this. I don't think this is possible to show on the video how this really looks, but it is just absolutely fantastic. It's even accurate to the last hertz. How the heck is that possible? This thing is, what, 55 years old? My god, this is amazing. So this is the display time. What if I... Okay. I don't see any... Okay, then you will have more time to read or write down, read the numbers, write it down, yada, yada, yada. And... Uh, Oh, man, I am totally in love with this machine. So now it's skating. Yeah, you see? Now it's a lot faster. And then we'll see. Hey, oh, it's between four and five. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. And then you can do manual. And just, what is that? Reset. How, oh, manual. So, okay, manual. Count. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that works. Count, don't count, count, don't count. 44 tubes and it's working. And by the way, I counted and recounted the tubes. I found the reason why somebody actually say this thing got 45 tubes. That one is not a tube. That's the crystal, ha uh ha. -huh. I am so happy this works. I really wanted this for a long, long time. And now it is here. Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful unit. And the neon bulbs, they're actually quite bright. Here's what I'm doing, uh, 123.456 kilohertz. Uh, I think this one is rated 120 kilohertz. So that means if I go a tenth of a second, then I will show the 123 kilohertz here. But then of course I'm missing a digit. But look at the last one here. It looks a little bit funny funny it's like skipping some digits and if I go if I want to see all the decimals or yeah this is 10 Hertz now right so now I want to see the 1 Hertz see you can see this when it's counting it's not lighting up all the digits so I don't know what that is but it must be counting all the counts because otherwise we wouldn't get the correct results on all the others. So it's probably a counter issue or is it a display issue? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go a factor of 10 down. So instead of 100, I'm going to go. See, oh, see what happened. Now I'm going a factor of 10 down. And now all the neon bulbs works here. So that is just a uh, yeah it's just a display thing it's just the neon bulbs that's not going to light up this fast so that was a trick oh yeah and uh, 10 seconds so that means you can get even more digits oh yeah that is of course how it is so in 10 hertz, how about I give it 10 hertz? Or if I go and make it one, I, I put 12.3 hertz. That is what I'm gonna do, right? Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit uh, of a boring video clip, but it's easy for you because what you can do is just skip forward 10 seconds and then you'll see exactly what's going to happen. And then I'm going to increase the display time. See, this is 12.3 hertz. Isn't that just nice? 
So this is a very, very useful instrument. Imagine you had this in 1960. Wow, man. <laughs> I am totally in love with this instrument, I must say. So this is uh, one of the counter and display modules. I mean, this is just a very, very good design with the sockets and the plug in here. You unscrew us. Everything is just so full of genius ingenuity. Look how brilliant it is. And are you thinking, well, we got 10 neon bulbs. Yeah. And they're connected in a little bit of a funny arrangement, right? Look at that. And then this is a common for the next one and then a common for the next one. And then isn't that just fantastic? I found a schematic online that shows this as a schematic. Um, and this is the other end of all the others down here. Maybe I need to, yeah, I can maybe unscrew this so you can see. Yeah, I'll have to unscrew a little bit more so I can, I can show you this. But it is actually multiplexed. So there are two rails and they go like this. And then the other signals, they move in a multiplexed kind of way. And then there's, of course, a reset, because by doing this, you can actually make it work because you've got only two active elements in each tube, right? Two, four, six and eight. But we are counting ten. So yeah, again, they're really, really smart. And that is because of the multiplexing and they can do this. <laughs> A number of tubes. You can imagine by saving one tube here and you did this five times. It, it is just smart as I don't know what it is. Geniuses. If you are working with transistors, you would never thought about doing all sorts of funky tricks just to save a transistor or two. Oh, you would just do it the right way. But this is a better way. I think it is a lot easier to see what is going on here. With the glass removed, I just cleaned the bulbs a little bit, neon bulbs. And now you can see the multiplexing. What they did is they made this in plastic and they spray painted it. It looks a little bit like spray paint, right? And probably they just sanded the top of the numbers here to get rid of the paint. It looks a little bit like that, right? Really, really nice and easy design. Oh yeah, by the way, we know exactly how old this is. Look at that, it's December 1963. I got some inspection stickers. I also got a little bit of a sticker here. Yeah, this is just super, super high quality. If we look at this schematic, I was able to find online of the counter module. I'm sorry about the quality is a little bit low, but I think it uh, show a little bit about how this uh, counter works. So at the bottom left here we got the connector for the yeah for this uh, the whole module, and then you see the input signal goes to the first counter, and this counter is also the multiplexer, and you will see the signal uh, from the two outputs goes to the top of the two rows of all the neon bulbs 
and then it goes on to the next and to the next and to the next system and they kind of turn on the other side of the neon bulbs so this is how they're able to handle that many bits or that many counts with only eight active elements right look at this beautiful picture and a nice and short description of this unit and it also explains it works from one count per second to 120 counts per second i would actually say it's got a resolution of 0 0.1 but i don't know if it can count less than one uh, per second we can of course find uh, find out and this is uh, the web page is hpmemoryproject.org and they even made a really really cool animated uh like a video clip or something like that as well so and they added really really good studio light to this uh, video so it's looking really really nice here is the time or the crystal oscillator and you can imagine this crystal here Oh, let me put it so this is a 100 kilohertz crystal or resonator or something like that right and what we got here is a different I guess that would be buffers and dividers and stuff why are we having that many right I can't really find schematics of all the details here so of course I could just scope this don't you think this is super sexy with the this purple wire and the resistor here in the socket <laughs> well, that's pretty neat so if this maybe this is an upgrade or a, an option but if you don't have this module there see time base so if it's an external or if it's line or external i guess so we could also use some of the connectors here in the back maybe that is how it is we could of course oh this one is loose loose also a little bit worried about this is this supposed to be this loose really yeah maybe it is we got some other modules over there maybe i should try and plug this in again and measure exactly what it does that is a little bit interesting thing i just saw come on hp i'm not going to lose the screw because somebody drilled a hole through it no they did not there's this locking thing on each side right so now you are not going to lose the screw they just think about everything nice so of course i'm measuring this and it's actually explaining how it's doing things so here's 100 hertz on this point you see here we got 100 hertz no we got 50 hertz ah this is because now i'm triggering on mains frequency what i got here is of course 100 hertz i'm just triggering um on mains frequency just to show how little drift there is on this uh, signal so that's uh, quite funny and the other one is 10 kilohertz on the yellow wire and that is also here so there's definitely um, some tubes here that's doing some signal division of a factor of yeah 10 and then 10 again and they're able to do that with only five tubes isn't that amazing and this is the 10 kilohertz signal note how many zeros there are they did 
a lot to make this accurate. And that was the orange wire. I'm measuring here on the left side of the crystal. And what do you know? <laughs> that is a lot of signal. So there's 120 volts peak peak on the crystal. Wow, cool. <laughs> So here on the other side, there was this module, Amplitude Discriminator. And it fits here, and there's this locking mechanism. It's a very, very nice way to, to design modules with you know with tubes you can access everything from both sides you can see all the components and change and fix components here so so great for for you know easy service and also for manufacturing this, this is just brilliant and they're writing yeah, okay, so this is the discriminator bias, and what is that one doing? Okay, so this is an R2, other side, okay, so it's here. And it's probably doing some fantastic things about this module, right? But again, I don't have a good schematic at the moment. But I don't really need it, because this thing just works. There isn't so much to say about the power supply it's just a classic so there's a very big mains transformator in here we got some capacitors those are double capacitors i guess yeah that's what they will be also we got some selenium diodes and for the high voltage we got a rectifier diode and we got a big nasty pentode to do the voltage regulation and we got of course, a voltage regulator um, tube here. And we got a little trial doing voltage amplification with this. And then the pens also have regulated and cleaned up a high voltage. And of course, this will be the voltage fine adjustment. Oh, yeah. Mains input voltage selector is, of course, here. It wasn't that easy to see. And there is a possibility to have an upgraded version with a uh, a printer. So a printer interface. So this is the right side of the unit. I just want to show how beautiful it is built. Of course, it takes quite a lot of hours to do all this work but it's just so much how you do when you're building tube stuff this was just the good old way so this is the bottom and again it is packed with tubes Ooh, space for one more little upgrade maybe <laughs> of course this unit is very very compact and you can imagine all those tubes located this close it would have generated a huge uh, thermal problem so of course this is why we have this uh, fan to transport air around this unit but just to show you how compact it it really is here at the at the rear panel look at the two jack connectors here i mean they need to be mounted at an exact placement here otherwise there will be a short circuit between this wide wire and the other pad for this one and then there's a green one here it is just insanely compact 
They could have drilled those holes just a few more millimeters apart. It is just... Everything is just straight up the next thing. Huh. Amazing. Wow, look at that. I just love those. Ooh, I'm dirty. Ooh, you're, you're such a tiny little one. Ooh, what is that? That is a voltage regulator? Oh, what? oh, no, no, no! It is a double diode, right? Yeah! That is what it is. Let's have a look. What is the number? 6AL5. If I look, I just look through the glass instead of looking them up. This is just easier. Yeah, I bet this is a double diode. How beautiful. Yeah, yeah, of course I was right. A 6AL5 is just a twin diode. Super easy to see. And, you know, this is what I like about working with tubes. You just have it in your hands. And look, you can see the pin out. You can see exactly what it is and what it does. And Bob is your uncle. So good night and sleep really nice and good. I'm going to post a few pictures, nighty nighty pictures in night mode, so you can see the really really cool tube light. <laughs>